This week, we made our very own cornhole boards and they turned out way better than I thought. So put down your tools, guys. It's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and this week we got to build something that was actually surprisingly easy. Yeah, it wasn't too hard, but more importantly than how we built it, it's how we finished it because the paint job turned out awesome. This is how it went. This was actually a project that we finished this week, but it really started back with my dad in the summer when he was helping me out. He started off by cutting a bunch of two by fours to lengths. These would all be the frames of our cornhole boards. The legs had some specific miners that needed cut that would make them unfold to the correct angle. Then he ran all the two by fours through the table saw to remove the rounded edges. Before assembling the frames, we used a ruler to mark the exact spot for the leg bolts. Then I took a turn pre-drilling and counterseeking each hole so the screws would fit flush. Finally, my dad used a force a bit to drill the holes for the bolt that would allow the legs to be folded away for storage. Then it was on to sanding, sanding and sanding. You all know how that goes. Now in order to rotate the legs, one end needed to be rounded over. So we used a jigsaw to cut them out. Then of course we sanded those two. Now we discovered that our first attempt to drill the bolt holes by hands made for some less than perpendicular holes. So my dad had the idea to simply use a plunge router to make sure that they were perfectly straight. He then did some last minute sanding and then it was time to assemble the frames. Now the tops we decided to make out of half inch plywood. So we cut one sheet to size, glued up the first frame and laid it on top. We added a few clamps and then just let it dry. Next, we needed to mark the location for the hole and use a compass to draw it out. We then used a Forstner bit to drill a pilot hole so we get the jigsaw blade in place. Then I carefully cut out the circle. Finally, we used a trim router to round over all the edges. Next, I marked off the circle on the second board, drew out a hole with the Forstner bit again, and then cut out the circle with the jigsaw. When I finally assembled the legs, it was a bit of a tight fit, but that just meant that the legs would stay stored away when I wanted them to. Now, I had to decide what we would do to finish the boards. We don't have a lot of sandy beaches in central Ohio, so I thought it might be fun to put them on the boards. But before I ruined our work, I decided to cut a piece of scrap to scale and then try to use a series of three different colored blues, a white, and a dark sand to see if I couldn't get a convincing beach. To get the edge of the water, I cut a pattern out of a piece of foam board. I then layered on my three watercolors, highlighted with some white, and sprayed some dark sand where the water meets the beach and I really liked how it turned out. So with my plan in place, I called Sarah down to help me mask them off with some tape. We used a hot knife to cut out our beach shape, making it wide enough to cover both boards so our pattern would line up if we displayed them next to each other. We kept both sides of the cut since one would be used to spray the water and the other to spray the shadow on the sand. Now, these are the colors we chose to paint with. You'll notice I didn't fully mask off the top of the board, which I had to fix later with some sanding, so don't do that. We started with the darkest color along the bottom, then worked our way up to the beach with the lighter blues. Don't forget to get the edges. Once we got to the beach, we ran a strip of white across the template to give the crashing wave some sea foam. Then we removed the template. Next, we took a used foam brush and tore up the end to make a rough surface. Then we dipped it in white and used it to create wave breaks at the edge of the water. We also used it to create a few extra waves in the ocean. We used a sponge to drag the paint downward so they looked like they were moving towards the shore. While mine dried, Sarah started on hers. This time we properly masked the whole top. Once again, she layered from darkest to lightest blue. Something we didn't shoot was spraying the shadow on the sand. We used the other side of our template to block the water and the dark brown made the wave stand out from the board. After we did that, we added some more white sea foam to blend it all together. We added a layer of clear coat and that was it. They were done and look how they turned out. Now it was just time to play. We of course got some sand and surf colored regulation cornhole bean bags and played a few rounds. We may not live by the beach and it may be getting cold around here in the fall, but now now we can always pull out our private beach cornhole boards and play on the beach whenever we want while we freeze our butts off. So what do you think about how it turned out? They're so pretty. Okay, I'm surprised. I did not think it, your idea was amazing, but I didn't think it was gonna turn out that nice. I didn't either. That's why, you know, painting that little sampler board made a big difference. Yes. Uh, just because it kind of confirmed before we painted the big things. Right, what it would which look I like. feel like we needed. We needed the example. I think we, we need more of those to be, yeah. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> but they turned out great. Of course, they're done just in time for freezing cold weather of fall. Yay. But we get to see the beach on our cornhole board, so it was worth it. I want to thank Hart for sponsoring this episode and once again reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Hart. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything that comes out during the week. All right, break's over. Let's make something. Let's make something.